All right, welcome to my next Let's Play, which I'm actually recording during my first one as well. And this is Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. It's actually my favorite Castlevania game. Um, it's more of a hack and slash, it's less of a Castle Royale game. So it's kind of a nice break from the search here, find this, go back, backtrack, farm items kind of idea. Anyway, let's just get started. I'm sure most of you know the story behind this game by now, so it shouldn't be much of a surprise. I'm gonna just name myself Simon, and we'll be on our way. This game always seemed pretty epic to me when I was a kid. I had to rent it from the video store because my parents refused to buy it, so... Uh, this first level is basically the gatehouse area. And then it leads you toward the stable at the end. Um, if you haven't played this game before, I highly recommend playing it. Even though it is an old, older generation game, it's still great fun. And it's got some pretty neat graphics as far as Super Nintendo goes, in my opinion. You don't see a lot of this stuff in other games, like exploding skeletons. I mean, come on now. And vines growing up on the background while you're moving around. It was pretty high tech back then, folks. <laughs> I'm not too bad at this game, I'd like to think. Although, I do have problems in the later castle areas, but I think everyone has problems with that area. And now we've entered the gatehouse. And we come upon Bone Pillar, one of the favorite staples of Castlevania. Basically, you just have to whip its head until it dies. <laughs> you can whip its fireballs as it's shooting to, to avoid getting damaged by them, and it will kill them in midair. Money in this game is basically just for extra lives. If you collect a certain amount of points, you can actually gain it up uh, extra lives. But otherwise, there's no kind of upgrading or shop or anything like there were in the Castle Royd games that I've also been LP. Your life bar up top, you can see I'm missing three spots. Uh, basically, every damage that you do takes off about two or three spots. There's rarely a time where it's only one. You can also swing off of things in this game, as you just saw. That was a big upgrade for this game, and it actually makes it really fun for replay value, too. It was one of those things that no, no other game had at this time, and in fact, I don't know if any other games followed suit for the Super Nintendo afterwards that I can think of. Those vases give you uh, a short amount of invulnerability. As long as you're blinking, you can't be damaged by any kind of hit. And then that Roman numeral 2 stone actually allows you to use a sub-weapon two times. There's also a 3 stone that will allow three sub-weapons on the screen at the same time. Basically, you can get them by whipping secret blocks that you you have to know where they are, or use your sub-weapon on the monster. Sometimes they can drop them too, although it's pretty rare. However, if you notice, when I got the holy water here, it actually canceled out my two. And that's kind of the iffy thing about getting any kind of sub-weapon in this game. If you start to build up your Roman numeral blocks, you want to make sure you're going to stick with that sub weapon, otherwise you're going to lose them once you change. But I'm not too worried. I don't rely on my sub weapons as much as my whip, so it's not a big issue, I guess. And obviously we're into the stables now with these horse heads and And up to the second floor we go. I love the dead horses in the background. That always made me laugh. You 
do not want to jump when you're on those one th one more thick planks because they will flip over. Same thing happens if Medusa knocks you onto them like she almost did there. Now we have a ghost, you'll have to hit those multiple times. One neat thing about this game, of course, is you can control your whip. So you can basically use it as a shield if you need to, or you can have it all out attack the enemy. If it's swinging like this, though, it only does about half the damage that it can do otherwise from a full swing. And that brings us to the boss of this area, which is the Skeletal Knight. Basically, you could just kind of sit here and whip it, or you can throw your sub weapon at it. I like to hang back on boss fights, it's more fun. It's fun to stretch them out, plus they have great music. Basically, if you can't beat this guy, you're pretty sad. There he goes. And we are done with the first level of Super Castlevania 4. I hope you stick around. This should be a pretty quick Let's Play. And we will see you later when we head into the swamps of the Gorgon. See you then!